Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to the Pranzata Podcast. This is your host, Andrea Pranzatelli. This is episode number 81 on my podcast. This is the first in-person guest in a while. I've had a lot of virtual guests over the winter, but I'm so glad to have people back in person because the audio quality is going to be so much better. So let me introduce today's guest. This is Karan Madan. I fucking love his name. It sounds like a Mortal Kombat character. It's like such a, like you're going to win. Exactly. You're going to win in life if that's your name. Um, so just a little background on who he is and what we're going to be talking about today. He works in restaurant management. He plays guitar and he's very passionate about mental health, philosophy, taking care of yourself and well-being and stuff like that. And I figured he would be the perfect guest to have on today to follow up from my last podcast, which was about mental health and recovery. So since he's also recovered some issues as well in his past it would be nice to like bounce ideas off of a live person so here we go before we get into it if you are new to this channel this is a a podcast that is exclusively exclusively on youtube i typically interview musicians and comedians and different artists and entrepreneurs from the new york new jersey and philly area so don't forget to hit subscribe and comment on anything that we talk a lot talk about throughout the podcast all right so let's get right into it my first question for you is so you like to give me questions for my podcast (laughs) that are that make me think like anytime he drops me a question to answer on the podcast it takes me like three days of contemplation (laughs) so i figured i would try to give you some more tough questions just to kind of like pay back a little bit (laughs) (laughs) um so i'm actually going to throw back One question you gave me, I'm going to throw it back in your face. So he asked me to say, how do I define happiness? So I'm going to spin it back around and ask you, how do you define happiness? I think to me, happiness is constantly progressing in -hmm. some aspect. So emotionally, physically, mentally, uh, financially. Um, So to me, it's one of those things where you want to consistently do better. And that makes you happy and content in a certain aspect. But it also has to do... For me, it's a little bit deeper than that. Um, like people around me, right? A lot of yeah. times, people just want to have people around them, yeah. and that's it. They don't think about the quality of people they have around them. Gotcha. So I perfectly fine with being by myself, but I also keep select people around that actually add value to my life. Not saying that you know it's to use them, but it's like, what do they bring? You know, if I'm on my journey, how do they impact my journey in a positive way? Gotcha. So that it propels me forward, and vice versa. Um, and then also making an impact on other people's lives, even when I'm working with people, because I'm in the people business, working with a lot of uh, several different kinds of personalities, like you also want to be able to do good for other people, right. whether it's clients, whether right. it's guests, whether it is uh, vendors, whether it's my team members, family, friends, whatever it is, that also gives me like a sense of happiness. So I think all inclusive, I think it has to do more with like just being in a good head space and making a positive impact on everyone around you. That makes sense what you said about also taking care of yourself so you can do the same in return from other people. I also like that you included finance in your definition because I feel like a lot of people, there's like, I have a hot take on this. A lot of people be like, money isn't what makes happiness. And I'm like, yeah, but if you're broke all the time, that it's not that, I feel like for me personally, I feel like at a certain point, money could help happiness. I don't necessarily think aiming for massive riches will create happiness but you do have to have a standard that you can survive and eat food well there has to be a peace of mind right you can't achieve any kind of like happiness if you don't have peace of mind yeah and to survive well you need money you need food you know you need good quality you know exactly everybody wants to like have you know kind of keep like a certain quality of life and everybody's different a a certain standard of living but as long as you're able to obtain that and maintain that then you can worry about and kind of like work on how you go where you go from there but if you can't even achieve basic necessities then it's like all right yeah then 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 it's like so so i do think like to a degree uh money can contribute to the whole picture of like happiness like you said how's your you were saying standard of life are you like a bougie type of person that you need a high standard of life no i live in a one-bedroom apartment i rent right now i'm in somerville it's a nice spot it's a nice area but it's i'm not living in like the twenty five hundred dollar for a one bedroom apartment oh, either. God. Because yeah, those apartments I know you're ridiculous. talking about yeah. those apartments, the like the luxury apartments. Right, yeah. exactly. I mean I just need to be in a good area, in a good spot where yeah. it's a good space to be, sufficient space for me. 
and that's it and i'm good and that's it if somebody doesn't have enough money to maintain even the basics like yeah. that that how can you you know you can probably right. find joy in everyday right. things but it's going to interfere with and a don't lot get of me those. wrong we all like nice yeah. things and everybody yeah. has their own definition of what they like right yeah. so if you want to splurge on yourself then that's okay too if you were to splurge what would be your thing like a car like if you if what would be like your a watch like um yeah, maybe maybe watch, maybe a nice pair of shoes, and maybe like uh, I mean, I, I bought my car last year, so I'm not really like worried about like car right now. But maybe a new guitar, because I know that, like a couple of years ago, I actually had like a, a what was it a like three thousand dollar Gibson uh, yeah. Les Paul, and so like you know I sold it, whatever it is. So to have that again, that would be awesome, you know. So like a small splurge, but you know, yeah. still something to splurge on. I agree. I, I think speaking. I think for me, it would probably be music gear. That would be like the first thing I'd want to splurge yeah. or like anything for my podcast, like yeah. a new laptop we were just talking right, about. Right. But also I'd probably do like beauty stuff. And I'm not someone who like even wants a nose job or anything like that, <laughs> but just like the basic beauty things these days yeah. are fucking expensive. Like yep. to get your hair dyed as a female is like three four hundred dollars now <laughs> like if you have to put bleach in it and stuff it used to be like a hundred so like i would just splurge on like getting my nails and hair done and then yeah. like gear i don't think there's anything wrong with that you know definitely okay so next question Ooh, okay so i don't know why i picked this question it was something i wanted to talk about on my podcast mm -hmm. and i feel like since you're a pretty open person you might have some insight okay. how do you feel about alternative types of healing so for example um reiki i don't know if you know it or reiki whatever it's called r e i k i i think it's reiki actually reiki healing or like spiritual healers spiritual gurus anything in that field do you have you ever followed any like spiritual healers on on youtube or do you think that type of stuff is a scam i don't think it's a scam i just personally have not followed that kind of stuff but yeah. if you're talking about alternative um forms of like self-care yeah like i'll go to different lengths you know so like i think anything creative and any kind of a creative outlet I think yeah. helps a lot yeah. in self-care uh, because cooking for example I like cooking so yeah. that's another thing that I like so I'm not even so, talking about that I'm talking about specifically like these types of things like fortune tellers tarot no, I, cards I think like, if you're fortune tellers to me tarot cards I think that's like too much for me yeah that's that's not something that I would really go into it's just my personal thing my personal beliefs like I, I just sort of like I'm like yeah I don't need to go down that path uh, what about <laughs> astrology Never got into that either. So uh, I, 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 the reason I'm asking this is because you seem like someone who's done like a lot of work on yourself. Yeah. We've talked about this. Do you? What is your spiritual? Do you have any spiritual beliefs or anything like that? Well, I just believe in like making sure that I am in a happy place. So whatever I got to do to main to get to that spot, to me, that's kind of where where I work towards. So I don't follow any specific Religion um, or specific religions yeah. or specific spiritual beliefs. I know my brother told me about meditation and things like that. I never really got into that. I tried meditation. Yeah. My brother does it, you know, and he says it works for him. And I'm like, all right, cool. But like, I try and I just can't. I think my, <laughs> my mind's just too busy. I, no, like, I, I, just, I don't think I can actually do it. I totally agree with you. It takes me a lot of work. Like literally everybody and not like everybody keeps saying you got to do meditation. You got to do meditation. So many people keep yeah. telling me that the therapists, my friends, people I follow on YouTube are like, I did meditation and it saved my life. I have so much trouble focusing when I'm mm -hmm. doing it. And I'm like, the one thing I could do, which isn't, it's like kind of meditation, but it's, it's like a, crazy person's like version of meditation like we were saying someone who can't calm their brain down i do like um i don't even know how to i don't even know what the word of the phrase is for it but like i'll lay down on the ground and do some deep breathing and i'll try to like visualize what i want for my future i don't okay. know if that counts as meditation i think pure meditation you're supposed to just kind of quiet your mind and try your best not to like really engage in any thoughts not that you don't have thoughts it's just that right. they pass by and you're supposed to just not have attachment to them i can't really do that but i'll lay down and kind of like think out loud what i want for my future i don't know if you ever do that like vis I mean, visualization for your future oh no like definitely that. for sure yeah. but i feel like also like that maybe a form of meditation in itself you know it may not yeah. be the exact textbook definition but yeah. I mean, that's a form of meditation the yeah. whole point is like centering you know being finding like the center in yourself and kind of like connecting with that and finding that peace of mind yeah if you're able to do that through what you do in that process then i think that is a form that's, of meditation. that's the only way i could do it i can't yeah. just like lay there i could actually find yeah. a way to not have such a busy mind constantly like i'll wake up at like four in the morning and i'll me five too. in the morning and my mind's just going that, and no, i'm just me like too. that's why when you said like i messaged you this morning early and i'm like yeah. oh i hope i don't wake him up but i was like i'll start writing you know some of this the plan for the podcast yeah. and 
you were you answered back pretty quickly i'm like you're a restaurant person how are you awake right yeah. now <laughs> no like i actually fell asleep it was like it was weird i fell asleep at like nine o'clock woke up at like 1 a.m and i was up to like four and i fell back to sleep woke up again it's just weird like i do weird the same sleep. exact thing but then my yeah. mind is going so even when i wake up it's not like okay i'll just fall back to sleep yeah i'll wake up and then it's just like my mind's gone. i'm thinking about stuff i do that too i have work personal stuff whatever it is it yeah. just keeps going it's I hard gotta no find, i, I gotta I, find something where it's sort of like I think, th and I think that's meditation. Yes. <laughs> I, that's what and I mean. I, like we're I, supposed to do meditation. And right. We're really I just, I just can't. I don't know. It just doesn't work. I've tried it, and I'm just like, oh. I've like done. I've video looked at apps. Games? I've looked at. Does video games help center you? Yes, I do like video games. I don't have enough time anymore. Yeah. But I, video games is something I like. Music, watching movies. Like anything like any kind of creative stuff I guess or my stuff. my boyfriend is a big video game person and when I first started dating him I kind of judged it like oh it's something lazy but then after a while I realized and I like video games I used to play them as a kid yeah. um after a while I realized like wait a second I'm sitting here like neurotic like thinking about all these things and he he like goes to the video game to like calm himself down and distract him yeah. and I'm like this isn't as like lazy as I thought this is actually a healthy thing if you have a good relationship with it yeah. now like mind you there are some gamers out there that like they won't go to work they won't shower because they're so hooked on gaming but the I see like he goes to work he does his drumming and then he kind of like unwinds and detaches from life by doing video games and I started doing with him sometimes because mm -hmm. I'm like this actually does like pull you I mean granted you're still thinking and your your mind is engaged in the video game but it just kind of pulls you away from real life and like takes your mind yes, off of your like problem. A, it's the same reason like you know yeah. you enjoy a good movie because it kind of takes you to a different place right yeah. um so again it's all about balance like if you're able to like play video games and actually maintain like a healthy lifestyle yeah. alongside that's perfectly fine again it also involves like problem solving right so yeah. you sort of like your mind's busy but it's busy in a different way exactly so that also i think helps because it kind of keeps you creative kind of yeah. keeps you going keeps your mind sharp yeah. and plus it's just like a fantasy world you know yeah. i mean a lot of video games obviously are very realistic and some are like dark themed and stuff like that yeah. just depends what you want to play yeah um but you know so that i think i definitely believe video games is one, one of those things that helps me whenever yeah. i do get a chance to actually no i i totally like ladies out there who like judge your man or like judge like ladies <laughs> out there who are single and looking for men and they're like oh he plays video games i can't do it definitely find out like the level of how many hours he plays because if he just does it every night for an hour i actually think it's super healthy now granted i mean unless they're like a professional gamer and that's what they do for a living and they make a living off that that's like a whole whole different story um but if they're you know if they're not like playing all day and not going to work it's actually like i totally misjudge that just want to throw that out there it's also cool to be a nerd these days so it's yeah okay. <laughs> gamers are hot <laughs> okay um next question okay so you're into philosophy there is a for those who are not into philosophy that listen to this podcast so I can explain it to people. So there is a very common debate in philosophy and science, actually, called the free will debate. Um, a lot of scientists and philosophers debate this. Um, some people, such as Sam Harris, you can look into this. He would say that humans don't have any free will. Every action that you take is a product of your environment and your genetics, even when you think you're actively improving your life it can all come down to like you are programmed by your genetics to even make the decision to change your life. That's what some people believe. And other people believe that's a bunch of bullshit. You can, you have free will and you can choose, you can change anything you want. Or I mean, to a degree, depending on what, but you understand what I'm saying. So where do you stand on this debate? If it's something that you've thought of or didn't think about, do you think in your, in your opinion, based on your life, do you feel like you have free will over your actions or do you really feel like you're kind of just like a programmed robot doing things? I think it's a mix. So I, I think I'm somewhere yeah. in the middle because yeah. I think, yes, we are products of our environment, but I also yeah. believe our environment can be part of us to yeah. an extent. Yeah. To an extent, right? So yeah. like there's people like, for example, schooling, right? So you go to school, college, whatever, and you want to be this. Okay, so now you think you're going to achieve that, but then along the way you've accumulated thousands of dollars in debt. Yeah. When do you truly believe like you're successful, right? Yeah. So now there's the, systematically there's an issue, right, yeah. in, the schooling, in the schooling system. Let's yeah. just use that as an example. So it's sort of like you think about it and you're like, all right, I made a decision to be in a certain be in a better spot in my life but x y and z has kind of kept me from really achieving that yeah. um i also believe in like certain parts in the you know, certain i guess parts of the government they want people to they want poor people to stay poor yeah you know in the top one percent they want people to either want to stay up there so they yeah. don't want people to prog to progress forward yeah. again i'm not speaking completely factually but 
it's just a theory I have. It's something I've thought about to an extent. But I also believe like in our own bubbles, we are also able to make decisions that put us on like a better path. Yeah. Um, now we also make decisions to put us on a worse path. Yeah. And, you know, that's just life in general. You kind of like yeah. trial and error to an extent. So I believe that, okay, you, you have a good thing. You continue making good decisions to build, yeah. you know, because that's, I guess, that free will in our little bubble. Yeah. Or we try and like, you know, go off, off the be off the path and we learn the hard way yeah. or it works out. So it all depends because I feel like it's one of those things where we can make decisions and think we're making better decisions for ourselves. And sometimes it just doesn't work out because we're just not meant to be there. I guess like so I, I agree with you 100 percent that it's a mix because I've thought about this myself, too. And I'm like, it has to be a mix. like to me, it has to be a mix because there are sometimes I think about like, um, why did I decide to p- pursue piano? Well, for one, I naturally have a good ear. So it was something I gravitated to naturally. Like it wasn't it wasn't like, oh, man, I want to be a pianist. And I had to like go out of my way to learn how to do it. It was something that I like naturally I had the skill since I was a kid. So that's one reason it was genetically factored in. Right. Um, and then also, why did I decide to like really push myself through challenges Because I had childhood trauma that made me like want to prove myself or something like that. So it's like I could see the perspective that it's like, yes, I had the will to do that. But it was like certain environmental factors and way I was raised in my genetics that pushed me to do that. But I I still believe like I almost feel like I still I still believe that the fact that I can even build awareness, the fact that I even just voice that out loud, the fact that I have awareness of that means to me that there has to be some sort of free will outside correct yep. of because i would i don't think as a human being like i would have even be able to have the awareness or be able to know that about myself to see myself from the outside and like oh yeah i did these things but it was because of these factors how could anybody even like know, even know that, that or yeah. realize that unless mm-hmm. they had something else outside of themselves you correct. know what i mean so i agree with you wholeheartedly that it's like there are a lot of things that just kind of happen b- right. based on these factors environmental and genetic but i also think we have this like incredible ability to grow awareness right and we make you our know? own decisions right yeah. so whether it's for better or worse i mean that moment we may not think it's for worse right because yeah. nobody wants to make bad decisions yeah. but we have that free will to make those decisions and try and better our life and better way we yeah. want to be sometimes it just doesn't work out and you got to be like all right i'll just go to the default plan yeah <laughs> and you can just revert back but you got to try, right? I mean, you can't just sit there and just accept your destiny, accept your fate. Yeah. Because I don't think that's a healthy way to live either. You want to be able to progress and kind of evolve in some aspect. That's why to a degree, I think it's like not even responsible to say that there's no such thing as free will. Because right. if you do that, people are going to be like, oh, well, there's not. Well, then well, I'm just going to even try. Yeah, I'll just smoke cigarettes. Yeah. Like, because that's my genetics want yeah. me to do that. So exactly. fuck it. Yeah, yeah you know exactly. What I mean? So I, I, I feel like to a degree, it's like, I don't. If if there if scientists know the truth that there's no such thing as free will, they shouldn't tell people about it. Right, but you even know? social media to an extent has like that influence, right? Yeah. So it, like gives people a better idea. I mean, social media for better or worse, you know, it's mostly good, but there's a lot of like nonsense on there too. But for for the most part, it creates more awareness where you're able to you're exposed to more um, information. You're exposed to a better lifestyle, a possible better lifestyle, and so you, you're people become more driven so i think that's a positive thing about instagram. obviously there's a, yeah exactly about any kind yeah. of social media for that matter um instagram specifically yeah. um but so i think that's a that's usually also a reason why people are more driven these days and more competitive which is it's yeah. a good thing yeah. and you have people who are just gonna sit in their basement and play video games for 15 hours a day i do and, i know. i see what you're saying about the instagram being like competition is good because it drives people to improve themselves mm-hmm. but i didn't know this well i did kind of know this but i'm learning more about this a lot of the lifestyles on instagram are very fake like i mm-hmm. like i didn't realize this i i was watching some youtube videos about this some in- influencers will like actually go to car sales like lots and pose in front of a car and be like i got this new you know what i mean oh it's mostly it's I whatever think it's, it's mostly good if you have if you're exposing yourself to the right information yeah but if you're sitting there and you're just scrolling through and you're seeing all these like nonsensical profiles yeah. with all this bs that's on there then yeah you're gonna like try yeah. and you, you you're not getting a, a, a real sense of reality. Yeah. It's all it's all fake at that point. Another so thing too to... with like the fitness influencers, I was talking about this with one of my like female friends. She was like, she's like, she wants to like build a bigger, you know, booty. And she's following like female Instagrammers, um, like fitness influencers. And then she like, kind of like, she said she finally realized, wait a second, I don't even know if I'm able to attain 
the booty of my dreams because <laughs> I think these women I'm following paid for one. So she's like, I'm following these women who are like, grow your booty like this, this and that. And meanwhile, they all had like fat transfers into their ass. And like, so you yeah, can't I even thought about that. Yeah, like really? you yeah, can't, yeah, like you funny. could like think yeah. you're getting good information because you're following like a certified personal trainer, not realizing that they like edited their yeah, photos and got like filter. fat mm -hmm. transferred from their stomach to their ass. And she's like, I don't even know like what to, <laughs> what to you're just working. Anymore. You're working your ass off for something that doesn't even exist. exist exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I'm like, I do agree like that competition is a good thing, but there is that on the fact that it, the fact that it could all happen behind like screens where there could be photo editing and stuff does make it hard to know what is the good information. Well, yeah, you have to kind of figure out how to filter and all that. And, you know, and it all depends on what your interests are. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, so you're into music, I'm into music too. So if you're looking at somebody playing an instrument, well, I mean, they're mm -hmm. playing an instrument, right? So you have like something to look look at and be like okay i kind of want to be at that level yeah right now if you're looking at things like you know somebody trying to get a bigger booty that's yeah, a little bit a <laughs> little bit more involved i don't even i never even thought about like that being fake right so like because yeah. I, I don't think about it from that from that from a woman's perspective yeah. so i'm like i didn't even think about that like all these women working towards something and that just it could just happen with men fake. too i'm sure like i'm sure a lot of like muscle guys that, like yes, i'm sure they probably have like um uh, what is it called? Steroids. Like there could be yeah, men who absolutely. are taking steroids and absolutely. stuff like that. Yeah, it's hard um, to filter out the information, but you know, certain things that you can you can look at and be like, okay, that's real. Do you have someone you look up to? Like you're like, I love this person. Like it, whether they be like an inspirational figure or like a musician that you're like, this person gives me hope. And well, right. I like I like musicians specifically. I would say are you know I gravitate towards especially musicians that have several bands or do like yeah. things off to the side. Yeah. So like Maynard James Keenan from Tool. He was you know he's initially started with just doing tool and being the front in the front man for the band and then he has two other bands perfect circle pussifer he has his own vineyard you yeah. know so he has all this stuff going on he makes yeah. his own wine and that's obviously decades of, of of work you know finally like paying off so that's somebody i look up to you know not because just because tool is my favorite band but because that's somebody who's hard working gotcha. you know there's another guy steven wilson from the band porcupine tree it's a british prog rock band and he has a couple of bands going on and he's very you know very hard worker and you know again this Trying to trying to balance like multiple projects to me is always interesting because yeah. that takes a lot of dedication and hard work. Um, and Trent Reznor from Nine Inch Nails is another good example. Started out with Nine Inch Nails and now he's doing like movie sound movie tracks movie soundtracks. That's so, which funny. Is, you know, so it's just again they're evolving and progressing constantly. And so that's always inspirational to me because we all want to evolve and progress. That's funny you say that because I was just listening to this comedian called Miss Pat. Okay. Um, I was listening to a podcast, a uh, recent podcast of her. And she is so inspirational for that same, like, I feel the same way about her because not only is she a stand up comedian, she became a stand up comedian when she was like in her, I think her 40s, like after she already had kids. So that impressed me. Now she created her own TV show, like her own sitcom on top of being a stand up comedian. And then on top of that, she like built her own house. Like, like she, mm -hmm. she realized she was getting ripped off, like charge, like, like charging people or people charging her to do work in her house and she was like she's like i don't want to pay like 500 dollars to have somebody dig a hole in my backyard <laughs> like i want to fucking you know and she's really funny so she she has like a funny way of saying it she's like i want to fucking learn how to do this shit myself yeah. like meanwhile this bitch fucking built like her own the, the dog house in the backyard and she's like a contractor and i'm like right. how did this lady yeah. like this you know what i mean in her 40s and 50s to learn how to become a contractor like that's crazy like so same exact thing i'm like that's just so fucking incredible and especially like her roots everybody listening look up miss pat comedian she's so inspirational especially her roots like she grew up in the hood and like um i think she got shot like rapes like all kinds of stuff happened to her as a child that you could like man like if free if free will doesn't exist like how do you explain something like that exactly. you know what i mean right and that's exactly what i was just gonna say yeah. like you, know, you have these musicians who can they can just continue with one band yeah. and just kind of do that until they die and they'll yeah. still be rich yeah. right it's not they'll still be successful yeah but to kind of break out of that and do several projects and yeah. do something outside of the music genre that's impressive you're right because you're a lot of these something. people could be like i made it already right. like i could just retire now right. but they they it, it's not over for right them. it's for them it's not about just the money and just kind of sitting yeah. down and being like okay, i have one band i'm successful i'm famous okay i'm cool i'm done yeah. it's about like doing something different and progressing and maybe leaving back a legacy of sorts too you know which is not always money and property you know it's, for artists it would be their piece of art which is yeah. why you know something like music sort of like never dies yeah no you're right that's actually a good way to look at it unless unless humanity ends like completely mm. then eventually it will I think all be we have a, a while to go we have a while to go i think i think we're still in pretty good shape i mean even though we may think we're not yeah 
No, that's a positive outlook. I, like a lot of people are like the world's ending. It's all over. But then I hear pe- like my mom, like of all people, my mom's like, I don't think the world's ending. I think that's so negative. And I'm like, really? Like, like it was just so funny hearing my mom talk like that because I've never like realized what a positive person she was. Like I always, no offense, mom, but I, I never realized like what a positive person <laughs> you were. Um, but it's nice to hear people that like still have hope for humanity well yeah i mean i just think people have always been this way i think it's just more exposed because of social media yeah and because everything being more accessible now so you just hear about every single thing that's going on i think human beings have always been sort of like this that's funny my uncle said the same thing my uncle was like kind of poking fun at like young people these days he's like they always say everything's fucked up he's like it always was fucked up she, go, yeah. he's like it's just that now you know about it he's right. like you think when i was young like there wasn't like corruption going on it was always like there's just more people yeah you know so it's just i mean it's just normal like you just there's just more stuff going on there's more busy bodies everywhere yeah. the social media gives you somebody sneezes you know you know what i'm saying so yeah <laughs> you're exposed to like every single bit of information so yeah you're gonna get a lot of negativity as well but there's also a lot of positivity if you look for the positivity also people are more attracted to negativity because it gives them that like adrenaline rush so they're probably you're right there probably is plenty of positivity out there it's just that people don't gravitate it as it it doesn't like stand out as much necessarily right, exactly you know yep. okay next question oh i like this have you ever personally had any life experiences that have made you believe like holy shit there must be something out there like a weird dream you had or like a weird synchronicity you ran into somebody you prayed for something and it happened like has there do you have any life stories like that I don't know if I have any life stories, but I've been having like crazy vivid dreams this last couple of days. I don't even understand what's going on. <laughs> so a couple of days ago, and I was actually joking around with my with my family and like our little text thread that we have. A couple of days ago, I had a, a weird dream that my car got totaled. And it was like a very vivid, like my car was completely mangled, right? But I was like looking at it from an outsider's perspective, even though I was driving. It's just weird. And then two days later, I had a hit and run in Somerville because parked on Main Street and people in Somerville just don't care when they hit other people's cars and then i got rear-ended later that day i'm just like what the hell see i think so that's, that's weird that's an example that's of what weird. i'm talking about like that's that weird. i don't i wouldn't like, say like oh, it's a life story like you said but it's like it, it's to me that's a weird thing it's it, a, it's it was very bizarre and i'm just like sitting there and because when i woke up that morning i was like you know i gotta because the dream affected me i woke up in the morning i was kind of yeah. like nervous like it's making me feel a little like on edge so i was like you know i gotta be really careful like driving whatever so i was just stopped and on ramp going to work yeah. and this lady just I mean, good thing the damage wasn't too much. I don't know where she hit me on the bumper, but it was just like two little marks from the bolts on her license plate. So thank God that was, you know, my car didn't get damaged. That was all right. But still, like, I had a dream and then literally, like, two it's sort days. of, you know, I don't say it came to fruition because it didn't, but I got into, like, I had, like, two separate incidents happen. It wasn't, it was like, bizarre. precisely the same exact situation. It yeah, wasn't so like you, you got, your car got totaled, but... Right, yeah, but it was something along those lines. So I wouldn't say, like, I've had, like, life, like, anything that happened where it's like changed my perspective on things but it makes me wonder because you know like dreams are weird sometimes but also they're a reflection of like what we go through right yeah. so there's some sort of reflection on like i guess our emotions or what we're going through physically but i but to me when stuff like that happens where it's like kind of like premonitions or something like that that's when it makes me think that something else could be out there because i've heard of a lot of stories of people who have been like man i dreamt this and then it came true a few days later i've had situations like that in my life i talked about this on the podcast but i'll just say it briefly um what is it when somebody passes away and they sell their stuff? I think it's called an estate sale. Is yes. that what that is? So I had this dream that there were all these like tiny little like turtles in a house and they were, they were live turtles. So again, it's like not that can't come to, I mean, I guess it could come to fruition, but it didn't. Um, but I had a dream that there was like a big house full of like live turtles, just mm-hmm. like kind of like, you know, going all over the house. Then maybe like two, three days later, my stepmom was like, hey, there's an estate sale down the road. Um, there's, you know, she died, an old lady, they're selling all her stuff. Do you want to go there and like check it out, see if we can get some furniture or whatever? I go there and this lady collected little miniature turtles and they were all over her house. So like that's sh- like, that's what I mean. Like now again, yeah. I didn't, that didn't come to fruition because I didn't see a bunch of living turtles, but yes. it's just like, what? Like yeah, there's some connection there. Like, I, I mean, obviously I don't know how to define that, but there's, yeah. I'm trying to think of like things in the past, like dreams and things like that, that have kind of like come to fruition. But I mean, I can't really think of anything right now, except for the one that just happened 
literally two days ago. I mean, I've even thought that there like could be a scientific explanation for something like that. Like, like, because I, aren't there like theories in science about Einstein that time is all like time is not what we think of it. There's no past. There's no future. Everything is all one. So if that was true, then maybe I had already seen the turtles and I was dreaming about it backward, like something (laughs) like that. But, but still, regardless, that's just when stuff like that happens, even if it can be explained by science or not, even if it is something spiritual, like when shit like that happens to me, it's like there's something going on that I don't understand. So I've read theories <laughs> randomly where it's like, you know, your dreams are like sort of like a parallel universe. Yeah. You know, where it's like this other version of you. Yeah. And then it's sort of like if something happens, then it's sort of like, you know, it's sort of it's like, really broke, happening. like sort of it just broke through and it just sort of bled into my universe. Yeah. So, you know, so obviously I don't think I believe that. But again, I don't have enough information to know if that's true or not. But it's weird when things do happen like that because it makes you think, be like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. how the hell did I dream about my car getting totaled? And then I got into like literally two accidents on the same fucking day. <laughs> I, th- I think I read somewhere that as far as like science goes, there's not a lot of knowledge about dreams. Like, there's only so much people know about dreams, which is interesting. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, that. Because we all dream, right? Yeah. So. <laughs> I had some weird dreams last night, too. I had a dream. Sometimes, sometimes dreams are just like random thoughts that blended together. Because mm-hmm. I, we were talking about, I was playing video games. I was playing Crash Bandicoot, and then yesterday we were also my boyfriend and I were talking about these like weird fish. And somehow, like one of the characters in the one of the um, enemies in Crash Bandicoot and the fish we were looking at like combined into one, and it was like a insect that like looked like a fish, but it it was deadly. And I was having this dream about this like weird insect that looked like a fish like it was just like a bunch of things just collided and yeah, yeah, became yeah. its own thing in my dream yeah. Yeah. well that would be weird if it came to fruition you saw a creature like that just walking around that would be <laughs> that would be fuck, that would be fucked up <laughs> i'd run <laughs> i'd be like all right we're, we're out of here <laughs> yeah no it was a terrible dream too because i remember in the dream being like i have to kill this thing it's like and i was trying to sleep and i knew that yeah. it was somewhere in the house and i couldn't sleep because i was afraid it was gonna like crawl on me it was, it was yeah, what i definitely believe is like if you have something going on in your mind and if you have like thoughts and things like that in some aspect it influences your dreams yeah. but for your dreams to sort of influence reality that's when things get fucked that's, up that's exactly that just throws me off i'm just like okay that's that, that shit's fucked up <laughs> that, that had me fucked up for like a, a little while the two car days thing? ago yeah yeah the whole day, I was just like, "What the hell?" Like, yeah, that I just, was recently. Yeah, it was two days ago. Oh wow! Yeah. So I guess I asked you the question at a good timing then. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> yeah, actually, this morning I dropped my car off at the shop, so was, they put me in a rental. But literally, it happened two days ago. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. All right. Next question. Oh, okay. I do notice, and you were saying this earlier in the podcast, that I do see you go out alone. You know, you go out to eat alone. Is this something, have you always, because like for some people, that's like terrifying. Like for some people listening, like the idea of going out to eat alone or traveling alone to them would be like, oh my God, I can never do that. Have you always been kind of like that type of person who enjoys spending time alone or is that kind of something you developed over time? I used to be terrified of going out alone. Like it's, it's like, <laughs> it's like a stigma involved. Like you go out, you go out on your own and people kind of look at you and give you these weird looks like you know you know you feel that way at least and it may not be yeah. reality but you feel like people are judging you like you're all by yourself yeah. like oh does this guy not have any friends you know not your family and then it's just sort of those things like you know i went through some stuff in my life and sort of just kind of found myself and kind of like had to like reconnect with who i am and so the only way to do that is by yourself yeah. you can't really fix yourself if you have other people influencing your lifestyle so i kind of disconnected and kind of like did what I had to do, self-reflect, whatever it was. Yeah. And sort of that that kind of started that process. So I'd go out to eat by myself. I'd go have a drink at the bar. And the good thing with that is, like, I don't have to talk to anyone I don't want to talk to. But I can if I want to. Because, yeah. you know, I can have a conversation with the bartender or with the manager or whoever. A guest sitting, you know, next to me on, at the bar or whatever, maybe. And so then you start having, you start realizing you can have conversations that you want to have. You're not in a, in a situation where, oh, I'm with this group of people. I have to kind of like socialize. You kind of choose when you want to. Right, exactly. So that's something that I definitely, it was, I would say the last year and a half, two years, maybe I started actually like feeling comfortable doing that. Before that, I would never go out to eat by myself okay i would drink by myself i actually i i i'm with him like i like to go out to eat by myself because um i think the food and the drink is like 
is like enough company <laughs> like i like to eat like i'm like i want to have a good fucking like sushi yeah. or whatever and if i can't find somebody to go with i'm still going i want to fucking eat i love food yeah. um so i'm like kind of the same way the thing about being able to choose whether you could talk to people not as true for females because when a female goes out to eat by herself at a bar like sits alone at a bar that's it's really hard to like like at, at, unless like times are changing like maybe men don't approach women as much as they used to but i just remember when i was younger like in my 20s and i would try to like just go out with like a book or something out to like a restaurant and be by myself like i would always get somebody like trying to sit next to me and stuff like that so. yeah that's true too i mean i guess being female doing that but i mean yeah. there's also you can kind of like put up a wall and be like all right leave me alone and then, you know, it's hard sometimes do. it's yes, hard I, sometimes I, and i, I was just that, joking yeah. about this with one of like my younger female friends i was like they're not coming up to me as much. Is that because of the Me Too movement or am I getting old and ugly? Like I was trying to like, figure that out. And she was like, no, she's like, it's actually because of the Me Because I was like, Dude, she's like 20 something and like gorgeous. I'm like, okay, if let me know the truth because am I getting ugly? And she was like, honestly, they don't come to me in person anymore. She goes, they, because like they're afraid they're going to look like like predators or creeps. She's like, so it's not, she's like, it could be you, but it's <laughs> it's not definitely just you. Like, because they're like, they're they're approaching women less in person now, you know? Okay. So. I, mean, I had never really like, thought about that because I'll yeah. just, you know, if I'm going out to eat by myself, I just want to go out and eat by myself. Like, yeah. it's just a pretty woman next to me, like, all right, so she's there. Like, if, if we end up having a conversation about something, great. Yeah. But if not, then I'm not going to, like, go out of my way and try and, like, just because like, they're also on their own. They also kind of want to enjoy their, their time. Yeah. You know, so it's the same thing for me. Like, I don't want a girl or a guy, anyone just, like, trying to, you know, talk to me. Yeah. You know, and if they do, again, it's nothing malicious on their part. You know, they probably just want to have a conversation. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I don't, I feel like if you're out by yourself, you kind of want to be by yourself. Do you ever travel by yourself? Like, go actually... I haven't on... really done any, like, long, like, you know, long-distance trips uh, by myself, actually. I, something I want... I mean, something I would want to do yeah. sometime soon. In the Where next would year you go, so. like, if you could choose right now? Uh, I mean, I want to go to Dubai and India, but that's because my family is there. But if I want, if I went somewhere, I would probably go somewhere in the U.S. There's plenty to see in the U.S. I kind of would like to go to Florida by myself, West Coast. You know, just kind of just explore a little bit. Nice. And then maybe I'll go to Mexico. I might get myself in trouble if I go by myself. <laughs> so if I might need to go can with someone. Can you speak Spanish? I can, actually, yeah. Because did you learn it from the restaurant business? Or yes, did I learned it from the restaurant of... business. That's how it started. And then I kind of, like, you know, learned it with, like, friends and stuff like that, you know, yeah. and then kind of, like, I would say 60 70% fluency. But it's all self-taught. So, I, you know, it's plenty of times where I made an ass out of myself just to learn the language and it uh, kind of worked out though but it's cool because I can still use it every day in the, especially in the business that I'm in same with me I used to work in the restaurant business and I started becoming interested in Spanish because mm -hmm. I was just like ooh, I was just curious like learning how to talk with the chefs and stuff like that and then um then I took it seriously and started actually studying Spanish okay. so at a certain point I actually became like I would say 80 percent fluent but the problem is I haven't practiced in so long. So it would come back. Like if I hear somebody speaking Spanish, I can understand them. But I would have trouble. Um, like I could understand pretty much everything. Maybe like a word here and there. I'd be like, oh, I don't know that vocabulary word. But like the, you know, the nouns and the whatever, all the, the those types of things, the actual grammar I could follow. Right. Um, but I haven't practiced in so long that I think my accent would be just so white. And um, I would just forget so many words right now. I have to get back into it. Well, yeah, that's yeah. a good thing because especially in the restaurant, I'm totally comfortable speaking because it's repetition, yeah. right? I'm talking about pretty much the same things every day, you know, so yeah. that, that's I'm super comfortable with that. And everyone with like friends and things like that, obviously I can have good conversations, but this is like off time, like especially if there's like a guest in the restaurant and they yeah. start like talking about like, I don't know, random stuff that I'm not really comfortable yeah. like having conversations about. Like it puts me on the spot. I can still kind of get away and respond, but then my grammar starts getting all messed up because I'm not hundred percent yeah. how to respond. You know, that's why like I said, you know, usually when I speak Spanish, I'm in my, like my comfort zone yeah. and I kind of speak, you know, I work usually is the comfort zone I would say. And that's yeah. kind of like how I taught myself the majority of the Spanish that I know. Yeah. So it's, it's fun. It's, it's a helpful language to have, especially in the U S this part of the U S and then also in the restaurant business. Yeah. So that's awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, I got to get back into the Spanish. I should probably just like start listening to Spanish podcasts. That would be a good way to do it because it's like a natural way for me to get back into it because I already like podcasts. So it would be like, I think that would be an interesting I actually way. hired a Brazilian uh, dishwasher. Really? This dude does not speak English or Spanish. They speak uh, Portuguese. Yeah, exactly. But some of them, they speak a little bit of Spanish. Yeah. Um, I had a dishwasher last time and he, you know, was Brazilian and he would speak Portuguese and Spanish. So I'm like, oh, I guess I got to learn a language. So I, I've, cause I have to communicate literally with him through Google Translate. Like I can't, <laughs> I cannot have a conversation with him. There's no, there's nothing. 
I can communicate with That's him. That's funny. I'm surprised he doesn't, because I feel like a lot of um, Brazilian people usually know Spanish too. Like they kind of exactly. know it on the side. So that's funny that he doesn't know Spanish. Right. Either. So I'm looking in there and I'm like, you know, I'm just trying to figure out Portuguese and it's it's not that close. I have to a Spanish. I have a roommate who's like her first language is Portuguese. She's yeah. from Brazil. And same thing like. I mean, I think she knows Spanish and she knows she knows English and Spanish and Portuguese. But whenever I hear her like on the phone with her friends, I'm like, it kind of sounds like Spanish, but kind of sounds like French. Like, it's just like a unique blend, you know what I mean, yep. of different like accents and languages. It's, yep. it's pretty interesting. Um, OK, next question. All right. So last episode, I talked in detail, like pretty vivid detail about a depression and the thoughts I was having. You were telling me that. Um, you also have experienced depressions in your life. What are some things you have done that have helped you come out of depressions? Because as far as I know, unless I don't know, you haven't been depressed for a while. Every time I talk to you, you seem to be pretty positive. So you seem to be in a good place now. Um, what are some things that you've done in the past to help you get out of those states of mind? I kind of disconnected from people for a little bit. I mean, even though that seems like it would make depression worse. Seems like the depression itself. Yeah. Right. But I, I think that's kind of what helped me is kind of like kind of just sort of keep to myself, you know, stay at home kind yeah. of just self-reflect, kind of think about things. Think about self-reflection for me is like, you know, it's not pretty, right? When you're looking inwards and criticizing yourself. Like, we don't want to be criticized by others, let alone criticize ourselves. Yeah. So you said, you know, you sit through that because, you know, there's some stu- some decisions I made in my, you know, in the, in the past, put me on a different path, you know, so it kind of put me down this, like, hole of, like, depression, anxiety, yeah. high suicidal thoughts and all that stuff. And, you know, so I, obviously therapy was, like, the obvious one, um, but I never went on um, any kind of medication, um, but I just kind of, like, just detached myself and just sort of, like, focused on me and kind of what I need to do in order to maintain my mental health, emotional health too. Um, because that's something that I couldn't do without the people constantly like, you know, around me. Influences, like being right. influenced. Kind of yeah, like we were talking I mean, about the free that... will thing. It's like if you have too many people like giving you ideas, it's like you don't know what your voice is, your own voice, you know. Yeah, and then you know, I would talk to people obviously about it, and, you know, friends yeah. and stuff, you know, they would still like, you know, talk to me and give me advice and things like that. But only I know what I'm going through, you know, so I can take yeah. what they're telling me and sort of like apply it, yeah. you know, accordingly. Um, you know, I had a friend of mine that told me that, you know, there's chemical imbalances and the situational, you know, so sometimes you kinds, need those. Yeah. yeah, you need the the, me- the 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 medication for the chemical imbalance. Sometimes it's just situational. So you're in a situation where you just don't know how to handle things. Right. And that could send you down this path of depression. So right. I think that's kind of where I was. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't say I'm 100 percent like. Like, you know, I never get sad or anything. Like, that's impossible. Oh, yeah. We all sit there and we get a little depressed every now and then, yeah. you know, for whatever reason. Um, but I think I'm able to identify and manage it where it sort of doesn't get to that point where it's like yeah. those dark thoughts and, you know, like I'm not worthy. I'm, you know, feeling that self of like being worthless, yeah. you know, because and then when you have the wrong people around you, then that's even worse because then you feel lonely with people around you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I'd rather be lonely. Yeah. And, alone i've said that before happy. i've i've gone through relationships where yeah. i was like really upset to leave yeah. them but i'm like i felt so lonely with certain romantic partners that i'm like if i'm gonna feel lonely i might as well be alone so right. at least it lines up with exactly. each other exactly you know that's the worst thing if you're with someone friends family romantic partners doesn't matter what it is if you're with someone and then you feel lonely like that's literally like that's that fucking like that would like rip my heart apart like yeah literally but um whoops but yeah, so that I think I feel like that's kind of like one of the one of the reasons I chose to just kind of like detach. Not like I went into like a, a complete hole, but I started like picking and choosing who I wanted to spend time with yeah. rather than just spend time with anyone just because I was feeling alone. Right. Uh, going back to what you're saying, too, about like there's situational and chemical. I guess since I couldn't live without medication, I must have a chemical imbalance. And that makes sense because um, mental health runs in, issues run in my family. So I must have gotten it. But I think it also must be a combination, too, for me, like some situational, but like mostly chemical, like a combination of the both. But for me, what the medication does is it calms down the chemi- chemical issues and it makes it easier to handle the situational stuff correct it all ties in together yeah i mean i'm not saying i don't have any kind of chemical imbalance maybe it does exist but maybe for me it was the majority was that situational and if i was able to rectify certain things in my life and put myself on a certain track then it sort of eases i guess the um the depression a little bit 
Are you into like fitness or like nutrition at all? Does that help I'm, you? I'm not. Okay. I'm terrible. <laughs> I see you're always like you're on that, that uh, healthy run right now and you're constantly working out. You're cooking healthy foods. Yeah. I'm like the worst. And people are like, oh, you uh, you must go to the gym. I'm like, why do you think that? Because I'm skinny. Thin, like yeah. that's that's the only reason. I'm like, yeah. I, I could probably die of a heart attack tomorrow because I don't <laughs> I don't watch what I eat. You know, I don't man, say it. I, I'm telling you, I mean, it, this isn't all men because I've definitely seen some obese men or men with weight issues, but so many fucking men <laughs> have the best metabolisms. My boyfriend, oh my, I mean, in his defense, it's not like he eats a ton either, but right. he, I swear to God, if he ate like Burger King and, and Wendy's every day, he would still be like 150 pounds and tall and like, like 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 with abs like i'm just like mm-hmm. how like i feel like so many women i mean there are like thin women out there but i feel like it's more rare with women women yeah. carry more like body fat naturally so part of the reason why i do like the fitness and health thing is because i feel like i have to because i don't have like that kind of i mean i do have like a relatively decent metabolism i guess i could say but not like a man like so some, now, some men are so now do you do it yeah. for your physical appearance or do you do it because it kind of helps you like something to focus on it's a pro it's a process both okay. it, it started with physical appearance okay. it started there because i was like oh my god i'm on camera um i'm i'm doing i'm going on stage like all that stuff so it definitely started first with the intention of just like looking and feeling good on stage and on camera but then once i started doing it i noticed the benefits mentally and like so i'm like now i kind of stay in it for those reasons so i think it's okay to do it for for um your appearance but it, it's you definitely get way more benefits than just your appearance right exactly i was gonna say yeah. it's probably therapeutic to a certain extent as well oh yeah like yeah. like it, you it, that i like i don't even think about it but that probably detaches me from life problems is just doing fitness stuff like because it's something to focus on that isn't a problem like it's just lift this weight like just shut up and lift this well, weight that's why like yeah. you know i was mentioning a little bit earlier like you know the whole cooking and even playing music because you play yeah. music as well so there's like a process involved but then it's like you know you start you something there's a it. process and sometimes yeah. it's not always easy yeah. you know you know, there's obstacles and you but you get past that but then there's an el- there's a tangible result at the end of it yeah. so if you're cooking something you got the food at the end of it yeah you play music you got a song at the end of it do you cook i do cook yeah what kind of uh food do you like to cook uh i'll cook anything really i'll cook a little bit of italian i'll cook a little bit of latino food um i don't cook a lot of indian food the people i was, I was gonna indian, say you're though. from india right yeah, yeah, I mean, so I'm you don't indian. cook indian food i don't really cook a lot of indian I food every now and then why? I'll, i love indian I'll, food. every now and then i'll cook something but it's not like i go out of my way to cook indian food i'll cook something i, I cook a lot of latino foods because just because i'm around around it a, a yeah. lot and plus it's just sort of something that i i generally enjoy indian foods are hard to cook because i'm consuming yeah but so oh my, my mom God, and my mom yeah. and dad cook because they're they're in india so i haven't had their like a home-cooked meal you know from them in a while now it's been but when i whenever i'm with them like i just want to just have them cook my boyfriend and i <laughs> went to an indian uh supermarket around here recently they sell spices by like the like yeah, yeah. rice and spices yeah. by like this yeah, big and it's cheap. bags and yeah. i'm like holy shit like and then i we tried to make tikka masala i don't okay. even know if i pronounced that correctly and there was like 32 different spices in it and i'm yeah, like yeah, how it's... and we tried it was so hard we tried to make it and it it tasted like pulpery like it was just too <laughs> like way too much spices and i'm like i don't know how they do it and blend it to get that perfect flavor it looks so yeah, fucking i haven't hard. made tikka masala in a while i've i did make it once though i figured out like a way to make it where it wasn't like that much yeah in it uh it was like you know I guess you could say Americanized versions of yeah. you know, ethnic foods, obviously. Um, but yeah, I, I don't really cook a lot of it. I don't really cook it a, a lot anymore. I don't know what happened in the last like two months, but I just don't cook very much anymore. I just get come home from work. I'm just like exhausted. I'm just, you like, probably you know, get food at your restaurant, right? I do, yeah. But I also don't like, I just want, sometimes I just want to go out and just have a meal. You know what I'm saying? So I, I got away from like the whole cooking thing, which I want to get back into. Because yeah, you it probably got to get back ways. into it. Yeah. Number one, it's cheaper number two it's therapeutic and yeah i have a home cooked meal for myself so. yeah it's no. not like i don't know how to cook i like cooking i'm good at it so it's just like i don't know why i got away from it the last two months yeah but i get back into it you have two cats right you were saying i have one cat oh one cat for some yeah, yeah. i have two cats for some reason i yeah, thought yeah. you also had two cats name but... shadow yeah if so, i'll <laughs> probably photo edit a picture of his cat because his cat is so fucking cute is it a boy or a girl it's a boy yeah. shadow he's gonna send me a picture i'll put it in for you guys because he literally <laughs> has the cute like i'm not even kidding like i love cats he literally has the cutest cat i've ever seen so <laughs> yeah, he's pretty cute all right so we're reaching towards the end of the podcast we're about to hit that hour mark so i do have one more question for you mm-hmm. before we're done um i asked this to all my guests so i'm not purposely trying to torture you it's just i'm curious to know what everybody's definition is at this time in your life what how would you define your current meaning of life how would you define that it's a loaded question. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it is it is a loaded question, I'm sure, yeah. for everyone. Uh, meaning of life? 
So, you know, making positive impact on yourself and those around you and leaving, like I said, a legacy behind. Kind of from the beginning, yeah. Yep. So that's kind of how you want to, I guess, live your life. It's kind of yeah. like you're leaving something down, you know, so like, positive impact on other people. I think that's yeah. the biggest thing for me. I don't think people care about other people as much anymore. I think everybody is more self-centered nowadays. It's about me, 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 me. So I think like kind of like making sure that you're making that positive impact on other people. Um, I think that's important. I think I won't say it's meaning of life, but that's part of like how I live life. Yeah. Um, with the people I associate with, even at work or whatever it may be, like I want to be able to make a positive impact and kind of just evolve and progress forward. You know, I think that yeah. anybody wants to do that. I don't think anybody wants to stay at a standstill. So that's, you know, I guess a simple, simple answer, simple yeah. yet achievable. I feel like that's actually been the common answer amongst most of my guests. They pr they all say some type of like variation of that same thing. Yeah. They're like the meaning of life is to like do best for the other people. Whether a lot of the a lot of the time it's their kids, mm -hmm. you know. It's funny the legacy thing. I sometimes wonder like sometimes I wonder because we're talking about like doing things for other people. I sometimes wonder if the legacy thing, and I don't mean you, I just mean everybody. We all have like a desire to do something or leave something behind in the world. Sometimes I wonder if that is a selfish thing in itself or if it's more about leaving it for the people, you know? Right. I mean, it's a mix, you know what I mean? But I think it's, I think if you're leaving something behind, I mean, it's, it's not about you at that point, right? You're just kind of, you're dead. You're, yeah. You're passing it down. So yeah, um, it could be an imp a positive impact you had on someone's life. It doesn't have to be monetary. So yeah. I think that's, I don't think it's selfish because I mean, you're gone. So I mean, yeah. <laughs> fuck are you going to pass down for yourself? You know, it's it's game over, man. You know, <laughs> you're out of lives. Yeah, We're no. done, you know. like. <laughs> so I think it's, I think it's a good thing to think of it that way and kind of live your life that way and trying to impact people in a good way. Yeah. I think like society is kind of self-centered. Yeah, I think it's because I, I, I work with so many young kids these days, you know, like in, in the restaurant, young kids these days is sort of. It's me, 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 me. That's all it is. Yeah. You know, so I see that on a daily basis. So, so and I kind of like, you know, I'll talk to them about it. But like, hey, you know, you should be a little bit more, you know, considerate about the people, about your guests, you know, your team, your coworkers. I don't know. I had like, like, I'm not going to shout out what company this was, but I took personal training sessions from a gym last year or not last year, like six months ago, four months ago, maybe. And um, it was kind of a younger guy. Um, maybe he looked like he was 24, 25. Um, but I noticed that same thing. I was so pissed off because he like he did not like he was so annoying to work with because he was on his phone while he was training me. Mm -hmm. He'd be like, yeah, yeah, go do that thing. And then he would go on his phone. Yeah. And anytime I would ask him a question, he would like roll his eyes like I was annoying. And I'm like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. Like and I and I got so People are just assholes. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like I, I got so upset and I talked to somebody about it. I was actually in tears one day mm -hmm. like and I gave it like a, a week or two. I was like, maybe it's just me because I'm a very emotional person. Let me give him like the benefit of the doubt and like see if I could deal with it. And after two weeks, I finally like I was like, I shouldn't be leaving my training session crying. I mean, if I am crying, it, it should be because I worked out too hard, not because yeah. I felt disrespected. Like right. I'm coming here to try to get better. I shouldn't come here to feel like I'm not being cared for. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I was like, fuck this. And I talked to somebody about it and they're like, I think it's just the generation gap. Like they're so used to being on their phones. But yeah. like he looked like he he couldn't form a full fucking sentence. <laughs> he just goes, what did he say? He just. I, I was like, hey, what's the next exercise? And he just goes, chest press. And then he just goes back on his phone. I'm like, chest yeah. press? Like, And then I was like, what do you mean? And he like rolled his eyes like I was a fucking moron that yeah. I didn't know what chest press was. And I'm like, I'm getting training <laughs> sessions because I don't know what it is. Like, you know what I mean? I mean, I kind of know what a chest press is, but I feel like there's probably so many different variations. Like, do yeah. you want me to do the machine? Do you want me to do a free weight? Like, what do you want me to do? How much weight? Like, yeah. and it, You're like, trying to learn something, you know what I'm saying? So you have to be willing willingness to teach that information to somebody who's willing to learn yeah i feel like sometimes that all doesn't always happen yeah right? <laughs> so i think like that like but like i just i find that like really relatable to what you're saying because it's like that's kind of the general attitude of a lot of the young people now it's yeah just i'll try like... and be positive but don't get me wrong i'm so cynical and skeptical <laughs> because some people are just pieces of shit like yeah. that's just honestly like it's a reality some people are just assholes yeah and that's okay because that's just who they are i mean like so i'm trying people, to be positive yeah in the grand scheme of things but you come across some people and they're just dickheads like yeah. and <laughs> something you can do you're not going to change their life like yeah you're not going to change who they are that's just who they are yeah so all right so that's it for today i had a really great time i enjoyed this conversation a lot again this is the pranzata podcast episode number 81 i will include a link to his instagram below if you want to reach out to him or find him if he wants if, if you're okay fine. with that yeah, um I, I like i don't want to assume <laughs> but 
that's it. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you enjoyed yourself. Don't forget to comment on anything we talked about. Like, share with a friend, you know, whatever, all that stuff. And that's it. Have a great day, guys. Bye. Thank you. Thanks for having me.